Hello, happy people, and welcome to your Moment of Zed, the YouTube channel dedicated to the most beautiful car in the world, the BMW Z3, or as the folks in Leeds call it, the Z3. I'm Mark, and today we're going to pick up kind of where we left off in the last video. In the last video, I unblocked my AC evaporator by going up underneath the car. Today, I want to show you how to remove the cowl and get to the evaporator from above. We'll clean it up. We'll also take a look at the drains for the cowl itself, make sure those aren't blocked. And of course, very importantly, show you how to remove the cowl. But first, we have three Zeds of the week. And first up, we have Josh from Syracuse, New York with his 2000 2.3 liter five-speed Roadster. He's owned it about a year and since then has done a complete cooling system overhaul, replaced the fuel filter, the front calipers, put on new tires and headlights, a MagnaFlow muffler, new floor mats, and a new shift knob. Projects coming up include differential and tranny fluid changes, a passenger seat belt guide that needs to be fixed, an HVAC control issue, seat bushings, passenger seat belt retraction problem, and the deadly SRS and TSC dash lights. Josh, thank you for your service. I see that vet plate. Next up, we have Justin and Christina from Michigan with their 2001 2.5 liter five speed Roadster with 120,000 miles. Now, they bought this last fall and have done a bunch of work, including a CCV replacement an oil filter housing gasket replacement, a DESA valve rebuild, some rust remediation, new rear subframe bushings and sway bar links and transmission mounts, new transmission differential fluid, the door handle gaskets, and they put on Z4 wheels with Continental tires still to go, seat bushings, like everybody, and a cooling system work. Finally, we have Mark from Pennsylvania, who's the third owner of this 2000 2.3 liter five speed Roadster in gorgeous pistachio green with now, believe it or not, 360,000 miles. It has a number of mods, including the very cool OEM aero spoiler and gills. I love those gills. Dine and cold air intake, a front strut brace, Bayern mesh wheels, a strong strut, butt strut, and body brace, a fan delete, and many more mods. Very nice, Mark. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for sharing your beautiful cars. If you'd like to see your car on Zed of the Week, please follow the instructions in the description below. Now let's go ahead and take off that cowl. So here's what we're gonna be using today. Uh, painter's tape to mark the position of our windshield wiper blades a 16 millimeter socket to take off the windshield wiper arms, the Nexzet Klima Cleaner Pro, which we used last week, we're gonna use again this week. This was $20 on Amazon, link in the description. A windshield wiper puller uh, from First Info is the name of the company. And that looks like this. And there's other types that look more like gear pullers. I chose this one because I was worried the other kind wouldn't fit into the uh, the space, which is pretty limited, especially on the passenger side wiper. So we're going to try this, and I think it should fit. That was about $13 on Amazon, link in the description. And then finally, uh, an assortment of our uh, nylon tools because we're going to need to pull the rivets, the plastic rivets that hold in the cowl. Again, link for that in the description. Okay, so step one, go ahead and pull the weather stripping. Now there's three pieces that overlap the cowl. Two small ones on the, like this, one on the driver's side, one on the passenger side, and then the large one in the middle. And that just pulls up, and like me, you'll probably find that the glue, what little there is still there, is quite old and not going to be a problem for you. So next, mark the position of the windshield wiper blades with tape. That way you can position them the same way when they go back on. Because next thing, we're going to remove them. So before I get to that uh, wiper arm, I'm going to clean up as I go. So 
So I'm working on the driver's side just because it's easier access. Step one, pull off the plastic cap. Really nothing to that except pull up on it and put it somewhere where you won't lose it. Now with the 16 millimeter socket, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up that nut. And I'm not gonna take it all the way off and I will show you why. That came off nice and easy. So next, I'm gonna use the wiper arm puller tool to create upward pressure on this arm so it breaks loose. Now, if yours looks corroded, mine doesn't, might be a good idea to hit that with some penetrating oil first and let it sit. Uh, but as you can see, I've got this adjusted all the way up. And the idea is to put this metal piece kind of in the cup I've created by leaving the nut up because it's going to want to slide around when you start putting pressure on it and the the nut's going to stop it from doing so. So all you have to do is put it on so the screw's centered on the top of the stud for the wiper arm and then just tighten that up. Now you're going to want to create that upward pressure but it won't necessarily do it by itself. What you're going to have to do once you've created some upward pressure is go ahead and jiggle the arm and one jiggle and you heard that pop and that means it's loose and that's all there is to it. So we'll go ahead and do the other one and get on with it. So before I move on to the other one, a couple things about this tool. There's other tools that are made, like I said, that look more like gear pullers. What I was worried about is that they wouldn't work in the much tighter space for the passenger side arm. So that's why I didn't go with that one. I think this one I bought is going to fit there. I kind of test fitted it last night and it's looked like it will. If it doesn't, I'll let you know. There are other techniques uh, to do this without buying a special tool. I'll link a couple of the videos about that in the description. One thing I would say again is the area we have to work with, with the way our hood set up and everything is so small that those techniques may not work either. But if you want to try them, I'll, I'll attach those videos for your convenience. Also, before I uh, remove it, uh, I'm marking the driver's arm with tape just so I remember which arm's which. Although if you forget to do that, the passenger side arm is, is actually a couple inches longer. So that's an easy way to look at it as well. So the puller worked on the other arm just barely, but it fit. So I, I'd definitely go with that tool. Uh, I'd take the opportunity, although mine isn't very dirty, to clean up the splines and the stud with a wire brush. Uh, again, I think on camera, this looks a little bit uh, more corroded than it is, but there's barely any corrosion on mine, which is why it came up so quick. But you know, take advantage while you're in here to clean everything up. Okay, so next, the two-piece plastic rivets. Now, in another video that I actually linked in the description where a guy's changing out his blower motor and you also need to remove the cowl for access to that, uh, he pulled these up with his fingers, which is impressive. His must be a lot looser than mine. To get these, I had to start with a metal tool, which I hate to use on plastic. As you can see, I uh, put some painter's tape under there that got up under it enough but unfortunately I'm kind of jammed by the way this is set up with this tool so once that pulled it up a little bit I got my next smallest tool went up underneath it like this and opened up some more space and then finally I took the tool that would be able to pull it out fairly straight and I got the top part out okay so that's the that's what keeps that bottom part tight inside the cowl now for the second part of the rivet I just went ahead and used the second tool that I used for the top part and I just kind of slowly and carefully uh, wiggled it and moved it up and eventually that came out and that's what you have 
right there, the bottom part of that that expands and holds this in. Now, if you end up breaking any of these because yours may be sun bleached, not in as good a condition, uh, they're 99 cents on from ECS Tuning, and I will put that link in the description. Only seven more to go. So I would say the rivets were significantly more difficult than originally envisioned, as with most things that are projects. So once they're gone, though, the cowl will come right out. Except the weather stripping that stuck to it. And we will go ahead and tuck that back in. Okay, now underneath the cowl, a couple things I noticed. Number one, the rivets are actually three-piece rivets. There's a plastic cup that uh, stays in that lip. You don't have to remove it. That weather stripping that came up when I pulled the cowl almost seems like something someone added, maybe to fill some gaps. I'm not sure, but it doesn't look like that was original equipment. But if someone else has seen that underneath their cowl, please let me know. It stops halfway. There's the... Uh, blower box itself, which we'll get into in a minute, that has the blower, the uh, AC evaporator, and the heater core. Uh, next important thing is down in front of that blower box is what's called the elephant nose or elephant nostrils. There are two of them. Hard to see them, but they're there. Two of those. Those drain the whole cowl area. And if those are clogged, you might end up getting water by your feet or your passenger's feet. Probably the easiest way to unclog those is take a piece of house wire because you're going to have to make some bends. Kind of poke your way down and through. They exit right above the transmission or the clutch area. Uh, when you get underneath, you can see them. But if those are clogged, you're going to have problems. So you might want to check those while you're under here as well. Mine seem fine. Okay, now accessing the blower box itself. There are two tension straps that hold the cover on. All you have to do is lift up on the top strap and that will go ahead and release. Now there's a retainer, little retainer strap. I don't know what you even want to call that. Uh, I really tried to preserve those when I first did this off camera, but I did not find it very possible. So I just kind of broke that loose. That's not the end of the world. And you can just move those out of the way. Same thing with the other one, kind of hard to see, but just pop it loose, move them out of the way, and then you've got the, the cover itself, and you can kind of just shimmy that out, being careful not to break the blades on your blower fan, or your, the, the blades here, the fins, sorry. Uh, and now you've got access to the box itself and I'll go ahead and zoom in as best I can. You've got the blower motor resistor. If you have a fan that's like uh, you put it on one speed and it keeps going up and down in speed all crazy, it might be that. So you would have access to that repair at this point as well. So below that resistor is the AC evaporator itself. Uh, it's kind of difficult camera work here, but uh, mine has debris in it, dust, dirt, grime. So we're gonna go ahead and clean that out. First, I'm gonna vacuum it carefully, trying not to bend the fins on the evaporator. And then we're gonna use some of the next set to clean it out. So actually to get that debris out of the evaporator box or the fan box believe it or not i had to rig up this garden hose to my shop vac to get in there that was the only way i could get it now we're going to go ahead and use the next set and we're just going to go ahead and fill that box with it and let it foam up so now we're just going to use that next set cleaner uh, we're just going to spray it all over the evaporator uh, using the extension tube that came with it if you didn't see my last week's video as to how this works, check it out, but here we go. And that just foams up all over that evaporator. And that's an alcohol-based cleaner. And what it's supposed to do is go ahead and break up all the, uh, 
all the nasties in there and then drain them out the drain line. We'll just go ahead and let that let that foam break down and hopefully we'll uh, be seeing stuff leaking out the bottom soon. So we are not getting any leakage of the uh, broken down foam under the car yet, but I'm not worried about that. Once I start the AC and run that again, it'll start leaking. Uh, but what we can see, although maybe not on camera, but I can see in person and you kind of see the foam still breaking down in there, is on the evaporator fins, all that grime and, and dirt has been broken down and is gone now. So I'm going to call this a success. And obviously all we have to do to put everything back together is reverse all these steps. Well, there you have it, folks. Fairly easy to do. If you found this content valuable, please crush that like button as always. And until next time, remember, friends don't let friends drive boring.